it was always changing, so you kind of have to change with it. Yep, adaptation. Kind of do more with less than not profit sector. Yes. You really make yourself stand up against all of your other non profit competition. Yes. And is what we're doing now working? Like is is are we living in a utopia? <laughs> Everything's good, right? Like everyone's equal, everyone's got a fair share of the pie, no one's in trouble, no one's hurting. That's not right, right? So we need innovation and the government uh, is starting to wake up to the need for more innovation, both provincially and federally, um, to support it in some way. Uh, because what we're doing now is not working. Things are not moving fast enough, right? We've got climate change coming down the pipe. We've still got, we've got the highest uh, poverty rate for children in Canada in Nova Scotia. The highest in Nova Scotia is Nova Scotia, right? Those are fundamentally wrong, big, wicked problems, but they're also very complex problems. Um, so we really need to start to understand what innovation is all about if we're going to actually uh, move things forward. So the first step is understand what do we mean by innovation, what's really needed to support innovation, and why we need innovation if we're actually going to do anything with it. And I can add one thing. Yep. At an academic level, right, when you look at theory, innovation has three components, which is idea, uh, a general generating ideas, which is the same, is similar to creativity. The second is idea promotion, which is the fact that you take it out and promote it so that the idea is actually taking, getting some stock and some buy-in. And then idea realization is the return on investment of whatever that idea is so that you can start to realize the gains and the benefits to it. So a lot of people will look at <clears throat> innovation as only being the creativity aspect of it, which is step one. It's actually getting all the way to step three that turns it from creativity to innovation. Yeah. So basically, trying to, how, I mean, it's great to come up with lots of ideas, but if you don't do anything with those ideas and turn them into action in some way, what's the point, right? Uh, so I just, uh, a friend sent me a, a blog from Volta. Does everybody know what Volta is? It's an innovation hub in downtown Halifax that's supposed to be for anyone. <laughs> But when you go on their website, it tends to focus on tech and on business, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you ever want to be a member, make sure you, you say like you're doing something with the online world or tech world or something. <laughs> if you actually, but it's, a, it's like a, co a hub and a co-working space. But anyway, they had a blog come out. A friend sent me this recently. It was just uh, end of February. And uh, it was around what do you need to do to support innovation within your organization. And the first thing uh, that the blogger said was you need to integrate innovation into organizational culture. So it's not enough to just say you want to be innovative. You have to figure out ways to integrate it into culture. And the common phrase is that culture eats policy for breakfast. Has anyone heard that before? Yeah? Okay. So basically, you know, it's not enough to say, yes, we want to be innovative. It's like, how do you actually embed processes and mechanisms for innovation into your organization? Which is where governance comes in as a critical component as well. It's a broad idea that's hard to grasp. Uh, culture is pretty intangible. So figuring out how you're going to incorporate it into your culture is critical, but it's uh, challenging. It must be supported by leadership. Uh, if, it's, if it's not supported up here, then whatever people want to do down here is probably not going to make it way, its way through. This is a critical issue with government right now. There are all sorts of government saying it wants to be innovative. I was in a case study situation for developmental evaluation recently. Um, there's a, a DE circle of practice, if anyone's interested in DE. Um, it's a new form of evaluation. Does everyone here know what I mean by developmental evaluation? Okay, so I recommend you look that one up and do a little research on it because it's the hot new trend in evaluation. And the reason it's hot is because it's not so much about me just measuring outcomes. It's specifically about starting at the very beginning 
of a process, looking at very complex, wicked issues, problems, and what is the learning that's going on related to process to try and accomplish whatever the goals are. So it's a much more fluid, uh, much more uh, requires strong facilitation skills. It's not just, oh yeah, I'll tick that box or we didn't tick that box. So I'll leave that one with you. This today is not about development, but it's a key component, uh, I think, especially of cultivating innovation. I'll bring it into one of the other lectures. <laughs> I, can, I can always come back. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, developmental evaluation is key. It's a big issue in government right now. They say they want to be innovative. They're not supporting developmental evaluation the way it needs to be, uh, is what I'm hearing from the ground. Uh, Deloitte in 2016 said 82% believe the nature of organizational culture is a potential competitive advantage. And what kind of environment are nonprofits in right now? It's extremely competitive, right? It's, it's ridiculous in some ways because the word on, you know, the word going out there, even from government and so on, is that, oh, we want everybody to collaborate. We need to work together. This will be great. And the reality is the systems haven't changed. There's no extra funding for collaboration. There's mention of it in the social finance uh, and innovation strategy. But there's no support mechanisms for it. So that's something to keep in mind that on one hand, the system is saying, oh yeah, collaborate, it's not competitive, we all want to work together, nice, happy, all that kind of stuff, uh, kumbaya, uh, and reality is it's still a competitive world when it comes to uh, getting resources, right? Uh, so how do we deal with that? Benefit, meet organizational goals faster and more effectively is the idea of innovation. That's the goal, okay? Uh, so, any language, I kind of gave you some hints there that I wasn't supposed to, but any language jump out at you where thinking about the nonprofit sector and the community sector um, just jumps out? Was there any language in that previous slide that just, or things that made you think? Or question things like. Did it all make sense? When you think of the nonprofit sector, and the points that were raised in the blog from Volta, does it all make sense? It, it does, because I think that's what we're grounding with the current state of the nonprofit sector in this program. But like, I think stereotypically or traditionally, the nonprofit sector is thought to be sort of like a, a bit neat. Um, so the, they're under resourced, but like, we're all volunteers and we're doing what we can and it's lovely, but like, they are forced to meet more and more needs of the government or the, the other stuff. Like, there's third sector that is there when the government fails or when the for profit sector fails. Um, so there's a lot of always, like, you think our hospitals are not for profit, so our healthcare that we're receiving, we're relying on a non profit entity to provide that for us. So the needs that they are being asked to meet huge, and that's not what we think about when we think of like, oh, like the little soup kitchen around the church basement with us, lovely. So they are starting to be treated like businesses and that they have to show their accountability and their transparency and their efficiency in reporting results and meet all of these certain standards. Yes. I'm working on a grant right now, application for an organization, trying to help them with it uh, for HRM, and right there in the grant application it says you must have minimum of five different sources of revenue. Minimum. And they're specifically looking for earned income. Does everybody know what's meant by earned income? So that's not a grant. It is money that, it's not a donation. Would be like selling goods or something? Yep, or services. Yeah. Yep, generating money in some other way. Uh, and that's becoming quite common that more and more organization, government or granting organizations, foundations and so on too, people are asking about sustainability. They're asking how many different sources of revenue do you have? Who are you as an organization? They're asking for more and more, <laughs> actually. Um, and yet the challenge is 
for instance, uh, there's no money out there for collaboration or very little. Uh, there's very little or no money out there for just operating funding, right? Everything's project related. And you take, if you're lucky, you're allowed to take 10, 15% off the budget for administration or operating costs. So this is a real challenge within the nonprofit sector, okay? Uh, so it's interesting, the reason I have the photo there that says business plan, more and more organizations are being asked basically to think like a business and create a business plan. And yet there's very little in terms of support for organizations to learn how to do that. There is something called the Social Enterprise Institute of uh, Canada, uh, SEI, which you can Google and look up. And again, there's more information on that. I would suggest you dive into that. Um, and they're actually based out of uh, Halifax through an organization called Common Good Solutions. There's also SENS, which is the Social Enterprise Network of Nova Scotia, which you can also check out. And SEDNET has a lot of information on social enterprise as well. So I would encourage you to look in, dive a little deeper into that. But yeah, the question, this is what's happening. We're being moved as a sector in a certain direction, but there's very little support for how we make that shift, right? So it's a challenge. Um, and again, I'm giving away the questions, man. Um, so is the business sector the same as the nonprofit or community sector? How are they the same and how are they different? 